Hey guys, it's Mackenzie Lee, your resident overly caffeinated independent bookseller here to bring you more recommendations from my bookstore to your bookshelves. And I hope you appreciate them today because I turned off my space heater for this and it is frigidly cold here. So it's February, it is the month of love and Valentine's Day and paper hearts and chocolates and all those great things. So if you walk into your local independent bookstore, including the one I work at, you will probably see displays that are all about romance books. So in honor of February and Valentine's Day and the month of love, I'm going to be recommending to you some of my favorite YA romances based on some of my favorite types of romance that show up in literature. So our first type of romance is the enemies to lovers romance. Come on guys, enemies to lovers is amazing. Who doesn't love tension that then becomes sexual tension? So if we're talking about the best enemies to lovers romance of all time, I have to go with Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare, so it's only fitting that the two books I'm going to recommend to you are both retellings of Much Ado About Nothing. My first enemies to lovers romance recommendation is Speak Easy, Speak Love by Mikkel George. If you follow me on any social media platform, you have seen me talk about this book. I freaking love this book. I love this book so much, my name's on the back. So this book is about two teenagers, B and Ben, who in spite of their utter loathing for each other, have to come together to help their friend speak easy, which is on the verge of shutting down. This book is super funny. Um, when you write a Much Ado About Nothing retelling, it's always a little bit of a risk because Much Ado is so funny and it's hard to be like, I'm gonna be as funny as Shakespeare. This book is super funny. I dare say, as funny as Shakespeare. It's also a really good entry point for historical fiction. I know historical fiction is a genre I really love, but it can be intimidating to a lot of people because history can feel sort of impenetrable to read. But this book is set in the 1920s, so it's a very, like, accessible time period. Mikkel does a great job of building this, like, incredibly lush, vivid picture of history, but still in a way that's really relatable to modern readers. It's really accessible. I freaking love this book. Speak Easy, Speak Love by Mikkel George. Our second Much Ado About Nothing retelling is... I don't own this one. The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You by Lily Anderson. So this is Much Ado About Nothing set in a school for geniuses. A super intense high school where uh, Trixie and Ben Watson are two seniors, I think they're seniors, who have been feuding ever since first grade when Ben pushed Trixie off the monkey bars and who can blame her? Now they are in competition for the top spot in their class and Trixie is determined not to let Ben overtake her. Their friends are super tired of them being snarky to each other all the time so they try to set them up, much like Much Ado, to think they're in love with each other. It's really based in like geekdom and nerdery and there's Firefly references and Doctor Who. Because they're at a school for geniuses, the banter can be really, really, really smart without ever feeling inauthentic to the characters. They're all funny, they're all realistic, they're all three-dimensional. That's The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You by Lily Anderson. Side note, I just really love Trixie because I love me a good geek girl heroine, cause hello. My next favorite type of romance is the different worlds romance, where our two young lovers both come from very different places in their lives and in their worlds and in their societies and they have to come together and learn to like respect each other and where the other person comes from. So my recommendation for a two different worlds romance is Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley. This book is set in the 1950s in Virginia about the integration of a previously all-white high school. Our two main characters are Sarah, one of the first black students to enter the high school, and then Linda, one of the white students already at the school who is not on board with integration. Of course, these two get paired up for a school project. Uh, they're forced to work together. They're forced to learn about each other. And then they start making out. Guys, they fall in love. It's like an interracial queer romance in the 1950s. Hello. So there are a lot of factors that are keeping Linda and Sarah apart. First, Sarah is black and Linda is white in a time when interracial relationships were a big no. Second, they are both women in a time when that was also a big no. However, this book manages to remain totally true to its time period, but also have this great sense of hope running throughout it. It never sort of undercuts the very serious issues that it's built upon, but it never loses this sort of optimism that it has running through it. You guys know I'm always here for good historical fiction, you know I'm especially here for good queer historical fiction, and you know I'm always especially here for queer historical fiction with a POC lead, that's Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley. My next favorite kind of romance is the Forbidden Love Romance. 
because nothing is hotter than making out with somebody you definitely shouldn't be making out with. My recommendation for a forbidden love romance is If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farazin. This book is about a girl named Sahar and a girl named Nazrin who live in contemporary Iran. They are really in love with each other in a society that, to put it gently, frowns upon their kind of relationship. Um, so far they've been okay to just sort of like hide their love in the shadows, but Nazrin's about to be in an arranged marriage and Sahar just wants to tell everybody that she likes girls, especially this one girl in particular. So I've been working really hard in the last couple of years, as a lot of people have, to uh, consciously diversify my reading lists and the things I'm reading and the books I'm reading, and this book actually made me realize that in spite of this effort I've been making, a lot of what I read is still really western based. So this book was really great for me because it took me into a real world contemporary setting outside of my sort of familiar western bubble and talked about cultural issues that I generally think about only on a western scale. This book is also really skinny and really readable and really approachable. There's like, that's a weird word to use about books but when you have like a reader who's a little bit scared of like long books or small print, which I am scared of both of those things, it's important to have approachable books, books that don't look scary upon entry. And it's just really like romantic and thoughtful and looks at a place and an issue in that place that most people are ignoring in contemporary fiction. That's If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farzan. My next romance type is the Friends to Lovers romance. I love the Friends to Lovers romance so much that I wrote one. Shameless self-promotion over. I love Friends to Lovers romances, especially in YA, because there's something really exciting about trying to figure out sort of who you are when you're a teenager and what kind of adult you're wanting to be, and then also who this person is who is very important to you and how they are growing up and changing and how that changes your relationship to each other. So my recommendation for Friends to Lovers romance is when the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie Macklemore. But Mackenzie, you say, didn't you just recommend an Anna Marie Macklemore book in your last video? You're correct, I did, and I will continue to recommend them until the day I die. When the Moon Was Ours is a magical realism novel about a girl named Miel who can grow roses out of her wrists and her best friend Sam, who she has known ever since she fell out of a water tower. It's a magical realism novel, guys. Bear with me. Sam hangs paper moons around their town to make Miel feel safe and at home, and one day they realize that they are not just in like with each other, they are in love. However, the roses that grow out of Miel's wrists have the power to make anyone who smells them fall in love. There are evil sisters in town who would use Miel's roses for the wrong reasons, and they would do anything to get access to them, even threaten her beloved Sam. Miel is Latina and she's queer, Sam is Pakistani and he's transgender, and those things are very important in the book, but they are definitely not the only things that define these characters and not the only underpinnings of their character arcs. I love this book. It's so beautiful, it's so romantic, it's just sort of lush and decadent and magical. When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie Macklemore. My next kind of romance is the love triangle romance. So we're all very familiar with the love triangle. It has been a staple of YA since Twilight sort of created the category. Love triangles are the butt of a lot of jokes in YA. Will she choose Peta or Gail? Will she choose Broody or Boy Next Door? Will she choose Taylor Lautner or the shiny guy? What are their names? I don't remember. So my next recommendation for love triangles is for people who don't think they love love triangles and for people who super love love triangles. That is The Love and Trust by Kale Dietrich. This book is sort of like a really loving poke of fun at YA but also like very much a piece of YA literature with just like a tiny bit of like James Bond spy thriller thrown in. So it is about two boys. Our narrator's name is Caden. He has been literally bred in a lab to be a perfect YA love interest. He is representing the like tropey good guy who's like kind of dweeby and adorable and lives next door and you've known him for forever. And he's going up for the affection of a girl against a guy named Dylan, who's like the classic broody McBruderson, and he's like dark hair and dark eyes, and I ride a motorcycle and I'm very mysterious and I'm a bad boy. So this scheme is created for this one particular amazing high school girl to have to choose between them. But what this book considers that no other book has ever considered is that love triangles can also go like this, and the two boys fall in love with each other. And then they have like adventure movie shenanigans in trying to overthrow the oppressive system that has 
force this woman to choose between them. I love this book. It's so fun. It's so funny. It had me just like giggling the whole time. It's a really, really like loving poke at the YA genre. There's got a lot of like kind of gently making fun of tropes, but also really leaning hard into the tropes we all love. That's The Love and Chest by Kale Dietrich. My last kind of romance I'm going to tell you about is the second chance romance. The second chance romance is all about two people who are perfect for each other, who break up for reasons that are frustrating to the reader, and then they have to find their way back to each other over the course of the novel. My recommendation for a second chance romance is The Year We Fell Apart by Emily Martin. I love this book. It's very good for fans of like Sarah Dessen or Stephanie Perkins if you want your Stephanie Perkins with like a little bit more angst and a little bit more of an edge. I am generally not a contemporary romance reader. I don't sort of gravitate towards that genre unless a book really makes the hard sell to me. And I loved this book. So The Year We Fell Apart is about a girl named Harper who in one disastrous stroke of bad judgment uh, lost the boy she's been in love with for forever. His name is Declan. They're perfect for each other. And also she earned a reputation for being the easiest hookup at her high school. So her and Declan haven't spoken in two semesters while he's been off at boarding school, but all of a sudden he is back and Harper and him have to figure out how to, first of all, peacefully cohabitate in their neighborhood and then if there's any way to repair their very broken relationship. I'm always here for unapologetically unlikable characters, especially if they're female characters. Um, and Harper is really, really snarky, and she's kind of hard to love, but also that's kind of why you love her, because she really reminded me of myself as a teenager, where she is selfish, and she's definitely thinking about herself as sort of the only factor in her life, and doesn't necessarily think about everybody else. And this book is about her learning to sort of think about other people in her relationships, not just about Declan, but also her friends. It also is a really good deconstruction of, of sort of slut shaming and the way that we villainize girls and their sexuality. I really love this book. It's really sort of quiet and very romantic, but like angsty romance. So if you like Sarah Dessen, if you wish Stephanie Perkins had just a little bit more angst and Anna and the French Kiss, the Year We Fell Apart by Emily Martin is a great book for you. So those are my recommendations of great romances to read for February. If you have favorite books that fall into these categories, or if you have another kind of romance that I didn't talk about that you'd like recommendations for, mention it in comments. Tell me, I'd love to recommend books to you. I also love to recommend books over on Twitter. I'm at the Mackenzie Lee, where you are always welcome to hit me up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Epic Reads on YouTube. Go read books. Live your life. Love. I don't know, how does a person end a video?